the final thing that we will target for the day is that we've got the table which works but it doesn't look that nice so it's actually that's a detriment a detriment to user experience it's getting a little hard to read so we're gonna style it via CSS um, we'll go back to our code first if we take a quick look on our JS file where we're creating the table that's back online at about 150 somewhere where you've got your show classes table function this is where we start to build our table and in the beginning we created very simply a border of one so we see the edge of the table and we've got an ID there. Oh, look, we thought ahead so that later on we can, we can target it via CSS or JavaScript. For the moment, what I'm going to do is remove the border. To put that completely, just remove that. And we're going to rely on CSS. If we've added that table border 1, the CSS that we're going to add could possibly be co-opted by the inline attribute. Remember, we've got external embedded in line. So when something is in line, it usually takes over as the last element. So I'm removing border. Right now, my table is invisible. There's no edges. But that's OK. We're going to target it. We're going to edit it via CSS. So based on that ID that we have, we're going to write some CSS. And this is pretty straightforward about how we need to do this. Um, specifically what we need to do is a little more effort but let's uh, open now our CSS file we haven't looked at that one in a while let's go back to the folder and open kodika.css we can just write some plain old CSS here no special JavaScript magic we could use JavaScript but we'll just plain old CSS so make sure you're in the kodika.css file We'll go to the end of our code, uh, before the portrait style and all of that. Give ourselves a new line there, at about line 32. Well, we'll start off with pound cla table class. That's going to target any element that has that ID. We've got one element in our project with that unique ID, table class. I want to start off um, background co dash color. Any color. Let's try white smoke. It's slightly off white just to see a color. I then want to set its width to 100%. Stretch that table out to fill 100% of the, of the um, space that it's at. To make sure that this is uh, centered on screen, I can also do a margin of auto. This will automatically choose margins on all four sides of the screen, of the box, specifically left and right, so it basically centers it. You might have experienced it. I, I didn't do it on purpose, but let me check something here just to show you. What if uh, someone is writing a really long CRN and a really long name and a really long instructor's name? If I save that and show it just to show you there, huh? It goes off the edge. Um, that's a possibility that could happen. Someone could have you know, a really long last name. Uber Burger Meister or something. So we want to do word wrap. Word wrap does work at the moment if there are spaces. So if you've got something really long and there are spaces, it will word wrap it. But for names that are really long, it doesn't word wrap it. Those have spaces, so it word wraps. <clears throat> okay, so we can activate word wrap in CSS. Here to this table that we're working on. 
we're going to say word dash wrap. The attribute or the property that we're editing is word wrap. And the specific value that we can use here is break dash word. So that one's pretty smart because it will break your word as necessary based on the element it's in. This will break it anyway. It may break it awkwardly in that it's Smith and then it breaks it off to the rest, th, smith, and it breaks it off to the next line. That may happen, but at least it's not going to go off the edge of the screen like you saw a moment ago. What I also want to do here is, uh, at the moment, the table um, doesn't quite take up the proper amount of space on the columns. Um, right here, it's. I've made an extreme case, but what could happen is that depending on the length of these cells, um, the the columns could look weird. That one column's too big, one column's too small. So we can further add the um, another property here called uh, table dash layout, and it will be set to fixed. This is a way to automatically give us fixed with columns. If I've got three columns, it should divide up those columns equidistantly on three. If there's five, they will be equally divided. So that's going to set up the basics of our table. Before we check our results, we're going to um, target the first row here I want to style it differently so that it stands out like how I've got on my uh, on the enrollment sheet the very first row is styled differently than the rest I want to target that first row that first row is a th if you recall in our code here the very first row that, that is created is th so therefore, we can, we can target th as the selector that we're going to, to change. So if we had th, that would target table heading. That would target any table's table heading. So if I had three other tables elsewhere in the project, they would all style exactly the same as this. And we were, we've often been using IDs to target a specific element. But we don't have to, in this case, make a brand new ID because we've already got an ID that we can work with, the ID of table class. So if first we write, basically, target table class ID space, then you'll find th. You'll find a table heading in that particular element. You need a space there put it together, that's class th, which does not exist. You need a space there. And we did something like that previously up here. We said inside of an aside, you will find a heading 1. So same sort of thing here. Inside of table, you will find a th. And to that, what I want to do is a background color. We'll figure out some nicer colors later because we'll have a lesson where we finally upgrade the colors of our project. We've been using this plain old boring gray theme later on, probably next time. We'll start to deal with some of the styling of the project. It's been boring this whole time. We're going to change its color. We're going to change the font. We're going to do other cool things, but, um, probably also unique icons and such. For the moment, I'm just going to choose a color here because it'll be obvious. And then you can choose any other color that you want. But the point of this is that if you've got a dark background color, you should have an opposite color for the foreground. If the background is dark, the foreground should be light. If the background is light, the foreground should be dark. Like on this piece of paper, the foreground is the text, which is black. The background is white, is light, which is white, very readable. Over here, it's the opposite, where you've got white text on a light text on a dark background. So I've got a dark background, purple. I'm going to put text color, which is simply color, white. 
that'll be obvious and readable. For the moment, let's check our result here. Save all your files. Now we're dealing with three at once. Make sure you've saved them all and run it. But here, you don't really need to do anything that special to edit the table the way we've got it set up. Just this class will apply. We do have the ability via JavaScript to force a class or an ID onto an element via JavaScript. But this method should work just fine as is if you run that. Classes, show classes. So if you get something, it's very difficult to see on my projector, but there is the white smoke background, which is very, very, very light gray than the gray of the, the rest of things. I removed the, the table. I removed the table um, border, so you don't see any edges of the cell, which looks weird, which we'll fix. But at the top, I do see those divisions. I see now equidistant columns, which makes it odd now, because instructors cut off. Now, if I was landscape, it wouldn't be a problem, but we forced it to portrait. So setting that um, table layout fixed sometimes results gives us a very good result in that those columns are exactly equal. The column that doesn't need to be equal is the pencil. That's a really, really small set of info. It doesn't need the same sized column as the rest. So by starting, of starting all of them to be equal and then making that one column smaller, the rest kind of conforms. So we've got Um, a way to target the particular heading in that particular table. We're going to do another table class to start off with. And we have TR, which will target a row. Well, we don't want a row. We want a column. But there's no such thing as, like, you know, TC, table column. There's TR, table row, TH, table heading. TD table data, but there's no T column. There's no column built into HTML. Well, luckily, we've started to set ourselves up. Just to show you, back on the JavaScript file, we've got the, uh, the pencil. We've got a cell that displays the pencil, which we put a class into. That class was used to make it clickable, but a class is a class. A class is CSS, just as an ID can be used for JavaScript, but an ID is an ID for CSS as well. So we've got now something to latch on to. Uh, but before we get to that, um, we do need to edit this. Go back to your, to your JavaScript. Um, this will work, what we're about to do, but we should also add that class to the TH. We've added this class to every regular cell in that column, except for the heading of that column. So we need to copy that class and also apply it to the table heading up here, which is an empty space. And BSP is the non-breaking space. It's an, it's an empty space. In order for this that we're about to do with CSS to work on the whole column, we need to also add the class of button pencil to the first item of the column, the TH. So now we have a way to target that whole column. There's a class on every one of the cells of that column. And that's how we can kind of go around the fact that there is no table column tag well, we kind of made it up here, BTN Pencil, which worked just fine for, for us before. And we'll continue to use it here for um, a 
for this, but we need to then specify dot btn pencil because it's a class. So we're saying let's target this, let's target that element, button pencil, inside of this other element, table class. All we need to do here is do a width. About 10% size will be just fine. Just a small size, that's all we need for that column. The rest of the other columns will resize nicely. I want to see how that looks like, so I'll run it. dot btn pencil Without any styling first. We didn't know how bad it was until now we've styled it. So we've got styling almost there, and then right here, the best case. And then we've got a nice small column for that, nicely equal spaces for this. It still looks weird because I can't delineate each row, but that's coming next. And now we've got that. Maybe we could set that pencil to be centered. It's leaning a little to the left. Maybe we could center it. That should be an easy change here because we've got something that will target that whole column. We can do text dash align center. It's not. Uh, it's a pencil, but it is text. It's a Unicode character, so it aligns via text. Now, the way that we're going to make those rows visible is the zebra striping. One row will be a certain color, another row will be another color, and they will alternate back and forth. We have a way to target alternating rows via CSS. So next line here, again, again onto this particular table. We're going to do something. Let me start my curly braces here before I forget. This is very creative. This is a rather new, uh, new way to do this. I'm not sure how long it's been around. I don't think it's a brand new CSS3 thing that won't work on new browsers. But uh, it's not that common to do, but it's very cool. What we're going to do is say TR. We're going to target a we're going to target target a row in this table. That will target every single row. Further, what we'll do so make sure there's a space between the between that ID and that tag. Further, what we'll do is colon, and there's no space there, nth dash of type nth n dash of dash type parentheses. This pseudo selector will let us target elements based on rows that are of a of a certain type. And the type that we're going to deal with is odd. Odd rows. Even odd, even odd. So give me, let me target rows that are odd. And what I want to do with that is set a background color. Right here I could do, you know, pink, and that'll be obvious. Then I want to do the same code, copy and paste, and do even, and then red. I'm not going to really choose those colors. I'll tell you why in a moment. But this is what will, elect, will let us do the zebra striping. Odd rows will be that color. Even rows will be this color. 
The way zebra striping works best is if they are related colors. Pink and red are somewhat related, but I think a cool way to do this is to start with a certain color and then display like a lighter version of that color. Um, on some of these we have blue and light blue. That's what I'm getting at. Maybe blue and dark blue. But we don't have a lot of different named colors to work with. We have like 114. But we have infinite combination of colors if instead we mix this via um, RGB. We can use hexadecimal as well, but we can do it this way. If we do RGB, and I forget what color this is, but if we do 0, 50, 200, that'll be some color. Blue-ish. And then I'll do the same color for the even. And what I've said is, I want to do slightly darker, slightly version of colors alternating. The way I can do that is, I can call RGBA, A is alpha, A is transparency. And I can have then a fourth argument here, from 0 to 1, which is, you know, from 0 to 100, from 0 to 1, so a 0 0.5 is 50%, whatever that color is the dark version of the color, the light version of the color. It's half invisible. Behind that, we've got white smoke on the other rule there. So RGBA alpha. Lighten up that color to start off with. And that'll give us the that'll give us the alternating versions of the color, the zebra striping, for better readability. So checking that result, we had the plain old border equals 1. And that looked great in 1992. But now, in 2016, with a little bit of CSS, we can really make some interesting design. So, sh my classes, show classes. Here we go. I need to pick better colors, but that's the idea. Um, one particular row. Technically, this is the first row, even but it's the th taking over. Then, I'm sorry, odd. The first row is odd, th, then even, odd, even, odd. And so we have these alternating colors. We need to pick better font colors. Color equals white. That'll probably be a lot readable, a lot more readable. But the big idea was to set the zebra striping. Based on these dark colors that I chose, that's what will probably be a good contrast. Uh, later on, when we pick real colors for our app, um, we'll probably have to revisit that and choose colors that work better. So we'll have a lesson on, on updating the colors of our project. That will be, again, that um, the uh, artistic aspect of it all um, that is necessary when we're making our own app. This show, there we go. Now there's a very subtle thing there. V 
very subtle. You might not really notice it, but the letters look sort of chunky in an odd way. They kind of look bold, like class is hard to read, the A, for example. Um, jQuery Mobile adds a, adds a very small text drop shadow to a lot of our text, uh, like a one pixel drop shadow around most of the text. And in cases like that, it doesn't look so well. But in cases like over here, it looks just fine. So I want to override that drop shadow that is appearing um, on, on the text. I, had, I did a quick lookup for it, and it's called text-shadow. So um, on table. We may simply be able to add it to table class. If not, we would have to add it to table class, table heading, and, and table row. But probably it'll work with table class. So I'll say text shadow none. Right now there is a text shadow, one pixel. We'll say none. <coughs> we'll say we don't need the text shadow on any of our text. So none. That should negate what's already there. If it doesn't take care of it up on that high level, we might have to then put it on the TH and the TRs. Yeah, that's better. Do you see that? Um, the words are more visible. Class, the A in class, for example. So we technically don't have any border around our cells, but we have a background color of white smoke. And we're seeing through the edge of a cell behind it, and it looks like rows and columns. So I think that's good at the moment. We've got our data and our table. Oh, there's the pencil aligned to the center with text aligned center. As you beta test this, um, you may be seeing that it's cutting off your text at the top there. That's normal. Um, the jQuery mobile header at the top here has a very small area where text appears, unfortunately. But via CSS, a little later, we will, we will change that so that it's, it fits a little nicer. And through more beta testing, you may have noticed that if you click on the empty spot, on the uh, table heading, because it's got a class of edit pencil, it will want to let you edit that, which is not real. You know, what am I editing? Nothing, and it won't let you edit it because our code there is targeting. Remember, we have TD equal to zero. Well, these are not TDs, these are THs. So this doesn't even get populated properly. People will get confused. What am I doing with this? So thinking about that, the reason that that's happening is because we've got, we've got BTN pencil applied to every row's pencil and the empty cell up there. Um, 
a way to fix this is to give that a different class. With a different class, then it's no longer targetable via the JavaScript, but then it's no longer targetable by the CSS, which we'll fix. But let's, uh, let's, let's fix this. Uh, we don't want that empty space to be clickable, so we'll call this, it's not a button anymore, so we'll just call it th empty. So now the JavaScript, uh, the JavaScript will no longer find that it's no longer actively clickable. But the CSS won't find it either. The way to allow the CSS to find it again is go back to the CSS. We've said table class, uh, table class button pencil. We've said shrink that down to 10%. Well, that's applying to button pencil. I also want to apply it to uh, th empty to apply the same set of CSS rules to more than one element. You add a comma. I'm going to break this to the next line. You add a comma, break that over, and then we will do table. Class dot th empty. I'm saying for any button pencil in that table, and that's the comma, for any th empty in that table, apply this with. So CSS wise, nothing is different visually to the user. Behind the scenes, we're using two different. CSS rules. And then better yet, that empty cell is no longer clickable. I'm going to save that. Make sure you save your HTML, uh, make sure you save your JS file and your CSS and then run it. You should be using save all, perhaps, since it will save all your open files. So here's before and after. Visually should look exactly the same. The 10% column before that empty spot was active. And now the empty spot is not. Because it's different CSS. It's different class. We'll wrap the main lecture at this point. Any general questions on things we've looked at today? There's still other things that we can beta test and smooth over if we if we wanted to. We'll wrap up the main lecture at this point. We'll have some lab time. I'll put my code in the network folder up to this point. Um, when we come back, we're going to start to look at more customization of this project, specifically colors. Um, these default color palettes of A and B are way too limited. I want my perfect company colors. We'll do that. Um, we'll probably get into also making custom icons, maybe next time, maybe in two days or so. We will definitely then also do custom fonts. That Arial basic font works just fine, but I want a better font. And all of this time that we've been working, I've been just testing it as a quick way in the browser. I want to finally see it on a real device. I almost forgot to do that. So if you'd like to completely test it that it, make, that it works, you can get your practice of taco run device. Uh, uh, taco, run, taco run Android dash device. So we've been doing doing taco run browser. I plugged in my device. It's, it's been set up. Hopefully yours is. And I'm going to do taco run 
Android space dash dash device. Because I've been testing it pretty well on my browser, and I want to see it on a real device. You see the browser testing is uh, very good overall for some things. This doesn't work very well with vibration and that other stuff. But uh, for this, that is not that imp not that special to be running on a device with that doesn't need the APIs and such. The browser works really well to test it. But of course, I want to see what it looks like on a real device. If we take a step back on all of these days that we've been talking about pouch, this is a database that's running in the app. Once you actually run it on your real app, that data that you've been saving is there. It stays there for real. You come back tomorrow, next week, it'll still be there. It's been disappearing, of course, every time we come in here because of deep freeze. But it stays on your device. Now, obviously, if you uninstall the app completely, yes, then it does go away completely. If we set up replication onto a server, then that's how you can save this data onto a server. If the person completely un uninstalls it, they will be able to bring the app data back, but that requires a server infrastructure. So I have no classes yet. It's loading up there nicely. I'm going to save a class one, two, three, Android, Smith, save. I get the pop-up of class saved. I get the table that pops up there with my weird colors that I'll choose better colors later. That gets closed. I tap the little pencil. I get the little swipe over. That's good. Nice and smooth. I have the whole delete database. Cancel that. Delete a class. I get the pop-up. Trying to save a class without any... I'm trying to save a class without any any fields filled in, it pops up. Error, fill in all fields. I'm trying to save class 1, 2, 3 again. Save, pops up. Error, class already saved. So if I make a change, click the edit pencil, instructor Jones, update that, it updated, refreshed. So it's working just like on my browser on a real device. If I uh, close the app, and then force quit the app out of memory. It's out of memory. And then I load the app from my app drawer. Um, right there. It's launching for the first time with the splash screen. That's the other app. Um, oh, there it is. So uh, I'm launching it brand new with the current splash screen. There it is. Loads up my classes show there's instructor Jones so it is working on a real device I, I turn it off it'll still be there so that's it for the moment I'll put my code in that folder if you need any help call me over and we'll do it again next time